it's such a profound thing that it's hard to understand how to talk about. Um, those experiences are so much realer than real, and they are so full of wisdom, information, understanding, um, absolution, healing. Um, so when you felt called, like you were wondering, like, why am I not doing nothing but this kind of art, essentially? Um, it, that sounds like your dharma, your your true role, role calling. calling. For our listeners, because I've, I've heard of people that practice like kundalini yoga, for instance, having uh, some pretty high level experiences. Are those experiences like a psychedelic experience in that there is a visual component to them? Or is it more the oneness euphoria experience? So there is some that are very visual, and I would say mm -hmm. like all the ones I make art about have to be still in the realm of dualities where there's still some sort of form. Um, but my most um, pr um, like precious experiences are definitely the ones that uh, can't be painted, the ones of the formless realm, the ones of pure consciousness. And that to me is like the ultimate union with source. Um, and for me, the most... Um, the experiences I hold dearest to my heart, um, but I haven't been able to fully um, create those experiences uh, in an artwork just because of course. It, yeah. they might be a you? blank, <laughs> blank yeah. page. Um, it might just be a so, white piece of paper, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I don't want to be one of those. <laughs> so uh, I do whatever's uh, closest to it, which, uh, well, like next down, which is um, the the, what I would call the spirit realms before the the pure consciousness realm there's what I would consider the spirit realms which is what we often experience with um DMT which is uh, these infinite fractals and these very divine beings like a uh, crystalline matrix that's geometrically interwoven and, yeah, yeah versus I would say uh something like the pure consciousness uh realms would be more like 5-MeO DMT uh, mm -hmm. instead of NNDMT um uh, which is a very beautiful medicine. Very cool. Okay. So, and your art, what are you hoping to share with people as you, um, as you share the, 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 the art that you create? Um, my mission with my art is to raise the human collective consciousness. Um, I really, um, through exploring my past lives, I realized that I'm trying to fulfill the Bodhisattva vows, which I took in my most recent past life, which um, if some people aren't familiar with, uh, is the vow to help liberate all beings. Um, and it's a very, um, very big vow because it's a vow that lasts throughout lifetimes. Um, now, this can seem almost impossible to the ego. How do we go about trying to liberate all beings? It's, it's a very grand task. Um, but um, through deeper understanding of the vows, now I, I have found that it's through liberating yourself and finding your oneness with all beings. And as soon as you liberate yourself, all beings are liberated. So in a way, it's more of a daily practice of instead of like, hey, instead of getting angry at this person or frustrated, I'm going to stay in union with them and feeling the oneness and then the love vibration. And that's fulfilling my vows in every moment. Um, but that's uh, where my yearning to to raise the collective consciousness comes from so in a way it's it's um it has two levels one it is a constant um practice of myself feeling the oneness with everything in existence fulfilling my vows in that way but in another way i also want to create um something uh profound in this world while i'm here um which is which i try to do through the art so I try to do it in my own life daily and every action and then also through my art um, so that hopefully what I want is for people when they see the art to feel some sort of remembrance of, of source, of love, of uh, their true selves. And I try to paint that somehow. Um, I try to have it be in there where um, create an artwork that's just as high vibrational as I physically can create. Uh, and I'm always striving to to create it in a higher vibrational way. Um, mm -hmm. And 
hope that it will plant seeds of of liberation within the viewer. Um, even though there's a lot of people I know that uh, will see it and maybe not understand it at the moment, my aim is to be able to at least plant that seed so later it will blossom. Um, so I do my best. It's a very, very um, high goal to set, but uh, I'll spend the rest of my life uh, getting as close to it as possible. And yeah. ideally, uh, it would get to the point of um, raising the consciousness of uh, 3 billion people is my ultimate goal, and, uh, which is everybody on the internet. Um, so big goals. <laughs> but, you know, uh, the whole thing of shoot for, for the moon and maybe you'll hit some stars kind of. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's we, we have no understanding of how everything that we do ripples out and affects everyone around us and then they're rippling out. And so when we do turn ourselves up a little bit, our sense of love, love and awareness, uh, it, it does, it impacts the people around us. It raises their vibration in that way, just that little bit, they have an interaction with somebody else. It really is affecting the entire world. My understanding of bodhisattvas is uh, it's like a Buddha that's coming back down from the mountain, choosing to interact again with this world, uh, this aspect of reality. Um, and that really is a, a, a beautiful um, commitment to make the enlightenment of all beings. And I feel so many of us being called to this communion in this time. And it's, it's a very exciting time. And I also see that you're coming from love. It's not, it's not a fear. Um, and which is very easy to fall into. I, I myself feel that I'm constantly falling back and forth between the motivation being a loving orientation, of course, to share this grace with all people and know that they, everyone has access to it. And of course, then the nervous side of the human scene, all that's going wrong in the world and that given it's having its own sense of urgency. So how do you measure? Um, how, how do you yourself find ways to remain in that space, like you were saying, if you had like a disagreement with somebody and being able to stay in that place of, of oneness while you communicate? Um, I, I do my best to see them as my guru, uh, mm. even if it's someone that is um, acting, perhaps not how I would want to act. Um, sometimes people can teach us how not to be. So yes. uh, I practice turning everybody into gurus. So if um, someone's being very wise, I try to learn from them. If someone's being very uh, hateful, I try to learn how I can be more compassionate towards them. Because um, I understand yeah. yeah, I understand that that is coming from a place of suffering within mm -hmm. them. So um, I try to learn from them. And that's how I, I maintain my, my peace is through understanding through uh, seeing them as an opportunity to learn deeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes our greatest teachers are the ones that uh, challenge us the most. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Most I, definitely. I remember reading that somewhere and um, I really like how you put that. So just making everyone our gurus. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah, really and cool. at, the, at the end of the day, I love the quote from Ram Das uh, that everyone is God in drags. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a, that's a clever well, one, isn't it? Um, that's a really but I, I practice that. I'm like, can I see um, Source in this? That it's just a, another way maybe Source is playing with me to um, teach me more compassion, teach me more patience, 